Um, hold on. I kind of want to do. What if I did like a cute little get ready with me? But I also like I was going to be like, yeah, let's do a cute little get ready. Uh -huh. But I don't want to put on makeup, so I don't think I'm actually gonna do that. Um, so let's get started with today's video. Today I'm drinking hibiscus. <sighs> This in the background bothers me, but I keep it here to remind myself to work out. Um, okay, so I have ADHD. Okay, I'm just gonna start here. Um, and I did not realize that I had ADHD for my entire life. Um, it was it was literally up until this year that I actually had a confirmation from a doctor. Um, but I did spend like I started looking into things back in I'm trying to find a lip balm. Um, in 2021, I tried to like go to the doctor and try and get confirmation. Found fucking glue. Where's lip balm? And I finally um. Okay, so I went to the doctor and I was having a conversation with her and she went through like a whole like diagnostic checklist and she was like, oh, it doesn't seem like you have ADHD, you might have bipolar disorder. And I was like, I know I don't have bipolar disorder, but I looked things up, but then she never brought it up again. So I was just like, um, like uh, any kind of diagnosis again. So I was like, okay, whatever. But she put me on like various medications in order for me to like figure out like what works with what. I've tried Wellbutrin multiple times in my life. Wellbutrin is not that bitch I, for me. Um, and then I've tried Jotera and then I settled on Vyvanse and Vyvanse it's peak, it's super good. It helps me really well. I didn't take it today so I'm off my meds which is why you guys are getting like really unfiltered Janae today. Um, so yeah, um, I didn't take my meds because I, I woke up late and I could have taken it at noon but um, I'm trying to get back into like a healthier sleeping pattern and my Vyvanse is usually like good for like seven to eight hours and if I want to go to bed at like nine or ten I need more time to settle in. I usually take my meds at like 9 a.m. Anyways point of the story is um, she put me on medication even though she didn't give me a firm diagnosis and then the um, mental health thingy thing that I was on that I was working with what are the uh, telehealth whatever um I don't know what it's called anyways they switched doctors on me so then I ended up talking to this guy and talking to this guy at first I was like okay this could be a vibe this could be cool but then he was just like oh no I don't think you have ADHD I think you just have trauma and listen I can have both <laughs> I definitely do have both I have the PTSD and I have the ADHD you know we all here vibing okay um so he was just like pretty much just like ah, I don't feel like you have it uh, I don't feel like you have it and I was like okay but like I just met you you gave me no conversation no like diagnostic intake we didn't have any kind of anything for you to just give me like oh nah, you, you you don't have it excuse you anyways um hello is she in the camera is she that blob? Yep, that's that's the blob. That's the cat. Um, and yeah, he he didn't. We have like no connection with each other. There was no bit of information shared. He was just like, nah, you don't have it. And then I was like, oh well, do I possibly have ADHD? And then he goes and tells me the story about a patient of his. Look at her leaving. Um, he goes. He has a patient that like he would throw garbage like he'll have like paper or whatever and he'll toss it into the garbage can and even if he misses he just will walk past it all the time and he just can't bring himself to throw out the garbage to pick it up to clean it up and that was his description of ADHD he didn't give me any other descriptors any other bits of information and then his description of like bipolar disorder was um uh like getting up to go in like buy a boat or just like like really extremes of bipolar disorder like going like randomly deciding to go and buy a boat and going to do that though that's like something that you know some people with bipolar disorder they definitely do but it's i don't feel like it's ever an end-all be-all like that these this one thing isn't 
how to diagnose an entire group of people with various in my non-medical opinion i just don't i didn't feel like that was like a thing that he should have done or even like use as a descriptor descriptor so he said that one time last year and i was like all right this is a bunch of bs and i i kind of feel like you're gaslighting me so i don't want to work with you anymore so i spent like the next couple months trying to find another doctor to go to but everybody just seems to be booked up and everything was filled up and i'm just like okay so how do i go where am i gonna go to try and get a freaking diagnosis because this is taking forever and um I ended up having to go back to see him again because I ran out of my medication and um at the end of it I was just like all right so I need you to actually tell me what's what do I have ADHD or not and then he was like oh I thought that you went over this with the other woman that you spoke to and I was like why would you why would that be the assumption no we didn't have and I even tr I tried saying that to him the pre like last year but I guess he wasn't listening but anyways so in the conversation that I had with him I was like I do feel like I have ADHD and I I feel I was like ADHD symptoms are stuff that happen like from childhood and you know also can progress into adulthood and there are from what I've been reading what I've been seeing is that some people believe that you can grow out of ADHD and other people are saying that um you can have ADHD as, as a child but you don't grow out of it you just learn how to adjust or mask with whatever you have like with the uh, ADHD ADHD symptoms that you have so I feel like that was kind of definitely for like it for me like I know I had ADHD as a child, but as time went on, I, like I remember like zoning out in class. I remember um, also like I didn't. I feel like I wasn't hyper hyperactive, hyper this inattentive and hyper whatever. I'm just gonna say hyper. I wasn't hyper as a kid. I feel like I was more inattentive than anything. And um, I even saw like a video of me like when I was little and my sister and I were like dancing in the mirror like she's dancing and she's having fun and I'm dancing. And then after a while I kind of just started walking around and like I can you can see me like stand in the mirror and just like zone out. And that's something that like I used to do all the time like I literally would just like check out of like situations conversations um, class and everything. Um, so all that said anyways I ha growing with that inattentive part of my ADHD um it wasn't something that anyone really picked up on because I would be in class like completely zoned out and then I would have like friends who knew the 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 coursework or um I can also like turn on and off like oh shit I should probably focus oh car like I should probably like pay attention like I don't know there's something that like there are things that I did in order to help make sure that like I stayed on track in school. So it was also like nothing that anyone will really pick up on. My grades didn't slip like a crazy amount. I never liked school. Everyone knew I didn't like school. But I also found school like super easy because you just had to know a certain amount of information in order for you to get the goal. You know, I don't know. Um, anyways, uh, point of the story is, is that I definitely had um, ADHD symptoms as a child and some people say that you grow out of it but in my opinion I did not feel, I don't feel like I grew out of it I just felt like I, I learned how to deal with it I, I learned how to um, manage it in certain circumstances and I feel like since I graduated college like excuse me the a lot, a lot of the symptoms have definitely come up a lot more. I graduated in 2019 of May and from uh, June up until the January 2020, um, I was really just like scrambling, trying to figure things out, trying to get my ground, trying to get my footing. 2020 happened. We all have, know how 2020 was. Quarantine, lockdown, and I was stuck in the house with a man who abused me as a child and also my one of my main sources of um connection was therapy I had therapy every single week during 2020 and I was allowed to grow and figure myself out a hell of a lot more and then also TikTok found a lot of resources ended up having conversation with my therapist about possibly having ADHD the reasons why I thought that I had ADHD she supported me in the journey she gave me resources in order for me to figure things out and I am will always be so grateful that I had her um in my life someone who would listen to me and try and make sure that I got the best 
course of care. Um, she's a woman who always cares about me, always takes care of me, and I will always appreciate having her as my therapist. 10 out of 10, fucking peak. Um, and point, point, what was the point? Um, I'm just telling the story. I'm just telling the ADHD story. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I was able to figure things out, sort things out. Um, I didn't really realize, um, cause also like having, after like losing that kind of foundation that I had, um, not only from college, but then also, um, being outside and um, being able to spend time with friends and do all this stuff, I kept losing my footing. I remember like, um, once again, I didn't think that I had ADHD. I didn't think that anything was really necessarily like wrong or any kind of alarm bells because um, the structure that I had, I was, um, if I wanted to work on something, like I remember like in class, if in order for me to zone out in class and like find something that was more stimulating for me to sit in class for the like, extended amount of time, I would write my stories. I would write stories. I would write blog posts. I would write um, video descriptors. Like I would do stuff like that in order to like, like get myself focused in class. So I was able to like sit down and work on something at least in order for me to start producing stuff. But as I graduated college and um, got into like, the adult world i realized that i was so hard for me to focus on the things that i needed to get done it was hard for me to actually like put the time and energy into making content into making blog posts like videos blog posts posting on youtube videos spending time with friends putting that energy into doing all of these different things it started getting harder and harder and harder until the entire structure of being like of normality of being able to t go out and hang out with your friends and stuff like that was completely taken away because of the pandemic and then i was like shit i was already scrambling i was already trying to figure out like what the hell is going on and the next you know pandemic loses best friend everything is just like everything just like completely like changed since i mean obviously since 2020 but since 2019 since after i graduated it was i was really like scrambling so um yeah, now that I have been on medication, um, I've been spending the past couple months just trying to regain my footing to try and learn a lot more about myself, my needs, how to get myself um, into certain projects, how to make sure that I actually um, accomplish whatever goals that I need to accomplish because um, I started realizing that, well, I started learning that, you know, it's more of a, is it a dopamine or a serotonin? um that adhd i think it's dopamine that yes yeah, dopamine that adhd people um lack excuse me um i've been super nasally so my bad but um because of the lack of dopamine it's diff more difficult for me to do certain things um for example i really want to get back into my fitness i want to go back into i want to start training for a marathon that's something that i plan on like um doing like a series on in the future the amount of series that i've started and haven't finished bro um because <laughs> then i'm just like oh shit i forgot I, I was supposed to do like taking a shot every day every month and like for the end of ending of the year i was going to be like yeah look at me but like march i was mostly sober no i was yeah i was most mostly sober i feel like at the beginning of the month i wasn't sober and then i spent most of the month just being sober so i forgot to take a shot and then april was trauma month everything was fucking traumatic um it was it was hard and so i completely forgot about that and may passed and fuck it is june <laughs> how did that happen anyways um wait did i take a shot in march no i think it was i don't fucking know whatever i'm not gonna look at it up now but um series that i stopped because i keep forgetting serotonin that's where i was going going to the gym yes gym and i want to train for a marathon and I want it to be a series and I am planning on, I intend to stay focused on said series, but getting into fitness is so difficult because I don't have a Fitbit or a Apple watch. I want an Apple watch now. Um, cause I recently bought a Fitbit like last year and, um, 
it was giving me a rash on my wrist so back in um 2020 i had like an incident at my job i was working as a barista and hot water boiling hot water spilled on my arm so i had burns and that was bad but then last year with me having the fitbit um a watch it was burning my arm and my arm was peeling so i would i had it on this arm and i saw all the burns and i was like okay let me switch it to this arm and i still had burns and then i had to end i ended up having to return it which sucked but um because then i i have nothing for me to track my fitness and i know that i don't need it like for like a neurotypical mind i know that i don't need the watch in order for me to work out <laughs> Excuse me but being able to track my progress in a like an app form and and having that there is so beneficial to my fitness journey and i am so mad that i currently cannot afford to buy an apple watch if you would like to donate to the apple watch fund please do um i have also been having difficulties getting a fucking job if you want to help me with a resume or slash cover letter please do because once again adhd brand can't always focus actually my friend helped me with my um resume so cover letter i don't know whatever uh or if you have like any positions whatever i'm not gonna keep amping up the job part let's get over that um basically need money um can't buy the watch right now but i know that that will be really beneficial to me in regards to my fitness journey and having that i feel like it's always been like a dopamine rush like knowing how much i've walked in the day okay I, I met this goal and it's it was always so great for me i remember all the years that i've had like a fitbit or a, a watch that can track my my fitness it was always so nice having that um with me in order for me to like know how much i exercise it's, it was just always better it was always amazing being able to log in i even have like like i use my notion to track like fitness but knowing how much i i slept and how well i slept um i i remember like using it when i was drinking slash when i wasn't drinking and how my sleep um state altered and knowing like how it, it's amazing for me it's i need that i need that in order for me to stay on it because dopamine anyways um yeah i'm trying to i've been trying to like figure out how to do certain things and then allow for the dopamine so okay if you're gonna sit here and like edit a story edit a podcast and um i'll allow myself to play sims right after you know stuff like that in order to make sure that or um like just giving myself like little treats or um some people i follow a lot of like adhd groups and some people will have like, um, you know how the kids, I'm saying kids, but I know there were adults, but kids have those like tracker things. Like you put a sticker um, every time you do X, Y, Z, and then you get like a, a little treat or whatever. Stuff like that to like make sure that you get whatever goals or body doubling, having someone sit with you while you get work done. Also always peak. Um, I've just been learning a lot of tips and tricks in order to help make sure that I like stay focused and stay on it again because once again the structure that I had before has definitely washed away and now that it's gone I've been like really struggling and trying to figure out how exactly I can be a human not a human but like not even adults because I feel like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty like damn good adult thus far um, I just feel like I just need a little bit of um a boost yeah yeah i just need a little bit of boost a little bit of a dopamine kick and so that's, that's what i need to become a adult um now that i'm like at this point in this video um i'm literally sitting here and i'm like so what was the point of this entire thing why the hell did i sit here and ramble about having adhd and um um just to end things off i feel like it's important to share your fucking stories um i feel like um because people share their stories on tiktok because they shared um all of the different things that they were going through that's what made me be like oh shit i might have it and then i also listened to something else and someone was like oh yeah well i have um like dyslexia and adhd go hand in hand and i was like say less because um during the pandemic my mom happily told us like oh yeah i'm dyslexic and it's like Miriam, if you had the gall to say that to us years ago to jonna and i my sister and i we were struggling as children trying to like i, I 
like throughout all of our school year something must have been wrong with us for getting certain things mixed up turns out dyslexia runs in the damn family um there are things that you you know you need to know ahead of time so you know you know you know um, but people don't, we don't be talking about our mental health issues. We don't talk about the things that we struggle with or the things that we are just like, we just don't talk about that shit. And then the more that you don't talk about it, the more people like scramble to like, there's a whole bunch of people that are probably just like masking and trying to do their best to try and like assimilate to the society. Well, um, something has to be wrong with me because I can't sit for an entire hour. Cause that's how I felt like in school. Like I hated that. Cause fucking america you can't get up to go to the classroom it wasn't until college that like i'll be sitting in class and like as i said before i would usually be like writing a story or something in there but i would still just be like okay everything is stale i've been sitting here for too long nothing is going on and i'm just being spoken at so i would get up i would have my phone i'll probably did i have my airpods in college i don't think i have my airpods but i did have headphones you know the wires and I would like just walk around the hall. Maybe I'll listen to music. I'll listen to an audiobook. I would just do something that's just a little bit stimulating. Um, not a little bit, a lot of it stimulating from just sitting there all, all the time. And I would have like three hour classes and some of the teachers like, or two hour classes. And they would just keep talking all the way through and then be like, okay, we're gonna end things 10 minutes earlier because you guys are sitting down. So no, give me a break. Give me a break in between because I used to just be like, oh my God no no we're sitting here for so long it's so boring i'm gonna go and like walk around i'm gonna sit in the hallway for a bit i need something else to just keep my brain active because or my body active as well because it was just so dull um sometimes but <sighs> Yeah, we need to start talking about the difficulties, the things that we struggled with so that when people get to the point in their lives, like I got to this point in my life, if I had someone who was just like, listen, or if, even if I fucking knew that I had ADHD at a much younger age, which is a lot to ask for being a child of a black family, because um, we are never going to be like, well, not never, but historically, black people do not, people of color don't subscribe to being like hey um i have a mental health issue let me go and get some support because if you go into the mental health oh let me try and get some support and then someone's like oh yeah you're crazy do you know how many stories i've seen on tiktok i know this is a, like a side note but um i've seen stories on tiktok where um that's a person of a black person working in a facility and like a white person will come to them and just be like oh this person is talking in hysterics he's acting so agitated and um really like the person is pacing back and forth on the floor like rapping like reciting rap lyrics and that to me personally someone walking back and forth and rapping is not an agitated state call me crazy but that's not someone but like bugging out like but because like people don't like know how to deal with or handle black folks how to deal with black people with mental health issues like going and asking for help is hard because then you also have to have those people from your culture um who have worked their way within that system in order for you to get the support and help that you need like there is also like a black woman i also saw on tiktok i spend a lot of time on tiktok obviously um but she was talking about um she had to switch doctors and she happened to have a black woman doctor having a black woman doctor was like peak i no longer have one but it was peak when i had one but um the black doctor was just like hey yeah this medication that you're using is actually really not good for black bodies like they just do not work out and so um she started learning like oh yeah wow this medication certain medications aren't good for um bodies of different races different ethnicities because we have like a different makeup and so a lot of like the things like the medical system the um things that we eat consume dietary habits that everyone says that we need to subscribe to um they're not for everybody but they are for whatever majority they did all this testing for which is usually white people white males obviously like um even like cars like the cars are like usually um tested for like white 
slim white males that's like five six or something like that something like that but like a lot of the things that in our lives are not for our bodies are not for us and having people in whatever different fields that will um educate us on how th we should manage in certain circumstances like i saw something on tiktok that was like yeah the cars are made for us so here's how to make sure that you don't die in a car accident um because your airbag blows and it hits you in the head or something like the things like that um like oh she said the, to put the um the steering wheel to your chest instead of like upwards because if you get into an accident then it'll blow and it'll it could break your nose or something like that so having it at your chest and so because what it does it right that's what it does it stops yeah airbag and chest airbag anyway um yeah so um people talking about their experience it allows you to feel like more grounded more comfortable in whatever experience that you're dealing with because you having mental health issues isn't a white people problem it's a everybody problem and finding support is incredibly difficult but yeah um i went from having a black woman as my therapist and now i have a white woman as a therapist and i'm really interested to see how this goes like there was a moment where she was getting close to talking about like racial stuff and um i was like girl you better not i was like i was close I, I, I thought she was about to say something crazy um but not crazy bad because she doesn't seem like she's like mean i thought she was gonna say something ignorant that i would have to teach and she just like yeah but yeah and she just stopped and i was like okay cool thankfully and then having a a man as my psychiatrist i'm like are you gaslighting me um so uh i uh, i would love to have black women as my psychiatrist and my therapist because black women have nourished me throughout my entire life have always taken care of me have always made me feel cherished and loved and supported and so having them take care of all of my medical needs and that's dentist that's just everything it would be really amazing but it doesn't seem like i have that luck speaking of i have to go to the doctor tomorrow right Okay, so I feel like because I just checked out um, while making the video, I feel like I need to stop. Um, so yeah, that's my ADHD story. Um, I, again, am not on medication right now. Um, all I had was a coffee and now I'm drinking hibiscus tea. So yeah, this is my, I don't, I don't feel like I'm gonna edit this video. Um, oh, it's cold now. All right, um, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I'm gonna go clean that up. Yeah, uh, so I really hope that everyone has a really good day. I hope that this was helpful to somebody. Um, and if it isn't, then that's also fine because then I can look back at this video when I'm like 40 and be like, wow, she did that. And for 40 year old Janae, yeah, I did. I did do that. You're welcome. Um, I need to blow my nose like so bad. Ah, okay. Um, thank you guys for watching. I said that already and I'm just going to stop talking. So, um, actually I'm going to keep, I'm talking to myself, um, after I stop making the video, but, um, yeah. Yeah. My camera is overheating, but just before I really end things, I want to talk about hyper-focusing on things. Um, so a couple months ago, I was really hyper-focusing on um, word search puzzles. Um, and so I made my own word search puzzle and I put it on Google, right? This is my word search book. I was so into word search puzzles that I even made a word search puzzle. And once I finished making said word, word search puzzle and I even bought my own book, I only made, I only did one of these puzzles before I was just like, all right, um, that's it. <laughs> yeah, no, I did. Sorry, I misspoke. Actually, no, I, I did. I fully did one and I didn't finish the second one. And that was it. That was it. I completely checked out. I was like, okay, that was so interesting. That was so much fun. I'm done now. Um, so uh, hyper focus can really be a bitch because they can put so much time and energy into something only for you to be like, I'm no longer interested. Um, speaking of, 
I was supposed to finish, this is um, the beginning of the Doctor Who scarf. Yeah, I was gonna like record me like making it. Totally got uninterested after this. And um, then I also, uh, this is for both Animal Crossing as well as the Ring Fit. So interested in these things. I was so like, oh my God, this is gonna be so fucking amazing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work out and be so fit out of playing video games. Oh my God, Animal Crossing is just so fucking cute. I'm gonna, hyper focus, man. Hyper focus is a bitch. Actually, I'm not even, I'm not complaining. Actually, I really love my hyper focus because I learn a lot about so many different things. And I usually go back to them after a while. Like I probably am gonna sit here and crochet um, a little bit, but yeah, um, I have like a whole bunch of skills that, uh, I just have and I like it. And, um, so it was, it was, it was a joke, but then I was like, I don't want neurotypicals to think that I'm like talking about, oh my God, everything's so debilitating. It's not, it's actually really fun having hyper-focus. I may put time and energy into certain things, but now I know how to make a word search book. And I also know how to create a book and post it on, um, Amazon, whatever it's called. And, um, it's like AK, AKP, whatever the fuck. I don't get, yeah. Um, I'll put the link in the description if you're interested. But now I know how to do these things. And um, I think that's like really fucking dope. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna stop making the video now because my camera is, as I already said, overheating. But um, I just want to add that. Oh, if you have any hyper focus, hyper, hyper, hyper focus things, um, what are you guys up to? Or what was your last one? What's your current one? Or what's something that you think that you're gonna do in the future? Let me know. I feel like I'm gonna hyper focus on um, training for a marathon once I get that fucking Apple Watch. Uh, if you buy a bunch of the fucking um, word search books so that I can get the Apple Watch do that or just send me money on cash out <laughs> or Venmo. Okay. Bye. Um, bye. <laughs>